Let's try and leave and see what happens. Wow, that's an expensive door. Mm -hmm. uh, with Dave Pilkey's uh, books, what was it that resonated for you with the, with the series for so long? I mean, you discovered them back 20 odd years ago. Right. I think Dave found this really great sort of blend of subversive, ridiculous, and sweet in all those books. And, uh, and, that, and that relationship between George and Harold at the center of it is really the thing that sort of kept me going back over and over again because I could relate to these two creative buddies. You know, those kinds of relationships uh, I've been lucky enough to have in my life, you know, and, and have kind of proven to be the most lasting of the friendships I've had too. You know, I really treasure that kind of creative bond you can share with somebody. Even though the movie is called Captain Underpants, yeah. how important was it to maintain the perspective of both George and Harold? I just wanted it all to feel like it was coming from them. It was there. They were the authors of it. Uh, when we go into kind of their comic book sequences where we're seeing their work come to life, that it feels like it's Harold's drawings and George's words. And it, it ended up being kind of like a, a guiding force for us, kind of sticking to that point of view. And whenever we veered from it, the story didn't quite work. And was that the same with directing the action as well in terms of, you know, creating different types of animation throughout? In our action sequences, they were often about Captain Underpants kind of trying to do the right thing, uh, but doing all the wrong things, you know, in the process. <laughs> and George and Harold having to do a ton of damage control, trying to prevent this from getting way out of control. So it was great because the comedy could come from the boy's reactions while he could be left alone to just create mayhem. What was it about Ed Helms that said, you know, this is the guy who can play a nasty principal, but also a beloved, dim-witted superhero with a cape and underwear? He's just super talented. I mean, he's super talented, and he's a great writer. Uh, you know, he came in, and he had, he had early on in a, in a very first table read, uh, done a great job with Captain Underpants, you know, it's just already was channeling his stupidity. And so he had nailed that, and we had to figure out Krupp, because Krupp's a very different kind of character, and they two, the two had to contrast each other. And we worked together up front a little bit, trying to find the right amount. But he, he locked into it and found this guy that you just sort of love to hate. Can you talk a little bit about recording with the other actors? Did you bring them in all together at times, or was it all separate in sessions? Because of their schedules, it just ends up being mostly separate. You know, we did, a, there were a couple of early sessions with Kevin and Thomas, uh, just to let them play and sort of create that chemistry with each other. And after that, it, it ended up being, uh, you know, all of them kind of on their own. I would, I like to sit in the, in the room with them and then I can read against them, I can, I can riff with them, we can talk through the scene and workshop it. Was there room to improvise then in terms of, you know, bouncing off of each other and actually oh, playing I, around? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I begged for it. Uh, you know, it was, I didn't have to beg much because it comes pretty naturally to those guys. Now, can you talk a little bit about bringing in uh, Micro's Image Studio into the, into the fold as well? Because it's unusual to oh, have... Micro's. Yes, pardon yeah. me. Um, because it's, it's interesting because it's usually a DreamWorks um, production and you bring you're outsourcing somebody right well that came about because when the, uh, the studio got the rights to the books uh, they were very excited they wanted to get the movie up and running and uh, at the time the studio was fully staffed up you know they were their slate was full they had boss baby they had trolls so all of our resources at the studio were actually spoken for right. so to get the movie made and the amount of time they wanted to make it and and everything they had to look elsewhere, and uh, a couple different, a bunch of different studios were explored, and Mikros did uh, an animation test that blew everybody away. So, th so they got the gig. Was there anything specific that they had any challenges with, or, or sort of putting together in terms of animation or design? Yeah, well, it was a tough. You know, th this movie looks very different than yes, uh, than any other DreamWorks movie we've ever made. So stylistically, we uh, we had a lot of exploration to do, you know, trying to figure out how graphic it could be, uh, trying to figure out the personalities of each character, the animation style itself. And what has uh, Dave Pilkey's uh, output been in terms of just uh, talking about the production and has he had anything to say in terms of the final cut? Has he seen the final cut? He has not seen the final cut. He saw it about six months ago. And then so after the, the screening, you know, I go in and 
he's all teared up and he was very emotional and it was really sweet. He, he was really happy with it. Is there any advice you would give to aspiring animators? I mean, you graduated from Sheridan College. It seems yeah. like there's this amazing group of people from How to Train Your Dragon to uh, Big Hero 6 that are all coming from Toronto or, or Canada in right. general right. or in Montreal. What was so valuable about Sheridan when I was there is that really they taught me the fundamentals. You know, I was a graduate of the classical program before all the computers kind of came in. So I learned, I learned the basics, you know, I learned the fundamentals of animation, how things move, how things can be made appealing graphically, you know, how line works and those kinds of skills transcend any program, any technology that sort of is constantly evolving.